This NFL Week 1 recap and Monday Night Football Props edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now and use code SGP. New customers can score $200 in bonus bets instantly when they bet just $5 on any NFL bet only on the DraftKings Sportsbook with code SGP. We're also brought to you by Game Time. Snag the tickets without the stress. Use promo code SGPN on your first purchase to save $20. Download the Game Time app and use promo code SGPN. We're also brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Play the Underdog Pick 'em in college or NFL and win up to 20x in one game. Use promo code SGPN at Underdog Fantasy for a 100% deposit bonus up to $100. Finally, we're brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. To the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean, second morning green with my partner in picks, Ryan Real Money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Hearts racing. Oh, really? Uh, I just, okay. I, I don't know if you saw, I, I just had some uh, flashbacks. <laughs> Joe Judge came back into my life. I had oh, to run no. some laps. Ryan. Oh, no. What? Well, you're comparing you're comparing this Giants team to a Joe Judge led. I have team. a list of things to fix, how to fix the team, and one of them is bring Joe Judge back for a one day contract to run these motherfuckers. <laughs> is is Brian Dable on the hot seat now? I, I, and people think this might be a troll. <sighs> this might be uh, me talking shit. But past two games, Giants seventy seven points allowed, seven points. Sean, gained take your bullshit division. elsewhere. Against division opponents in in very important games. This is uh, this is a serious matter. Okay, uh, I and would, the Giants seriously. I mean, what we, do you we make don't of this need game? to talk. Yes, Why are you making need, jokes? Yes, of course we need we, to talk about this. Our fans are serious football yes. fans. Take your TMZ f- <laughs> takes. Oh, I, it's not a TMZ take. I mean, Ryan, what are we doing? Who right, are we you know what, let me compose song? myself. I'm a little. I'm get, my heart's racing. I'm a little hot right now. What did you have? Well, I, was, I just did a couple laps, some sit ups, and push ups. <laughs> it was I right. needed to get the blood flowing. <laughs> All right. So, as I, I told you before, yeah. many, many of these trips have been ruined Sunday night in this same you manner. You did, Ryan, you did. One of the things we did get right was you foretold a scenario. You previewed, you put that negative juju into the world that uh, the Giants might be getting their ass kicked. And, and you were right. They did. They got destroyed. Hold on. I need to. All right, Ryan's putting his shades on. For those of you uh, just listening, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. I'm feeling very Gosh. I'm feeling vulnerable right now. Oh wow. And I, wanted, to, I wanted to put on mental my mental health right? I wanted to put on my shield. Okay. So obviously this was not a great start to the season. <laughs> Understatement of the year, yes. And I would like to say a couple things if that's okay with you. <laughs> no, you have the floor, Ryan. First. I would like to congratulate Rain Dakota Prescott on making it through his 11-hour <laughs> elective surgery to paint a mural on his uh, body. So congratulations to him. Ryan, do you wish you would have been knocked out like Dak was for the tattoo during this game? Uh, well, I, I did make a choice about three hours ago to say fuck it. Okay. And ate what I would consider to be a heavy dose for me. <laughs> Woo, it's smoking my weed. So we're going to make it through this together. Okay. Second, I would like to congratulate the Dallas Cowboys on winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, that is a disgusting act. At this point, I'm, I'm not. We might as well cancel the season. Just put start them the, the parade. Put them in the Super Bowl, unbeatable. Congratulations, Mike McCarthy. <laughs> get a fatter play slip. It, it makes you look fat when your play slip is skinny. Third, I would personally like to put my hand up. And take accountability. Oh, nice. I shouldn't have danced all over Kadarius Tony's grave on Thursday <laughs> night. Although well, then, very enjoyable. 
This was a great nugget. Took the entire Giants receiving corp uh, 38 minutes of game time to surpass Kadarius Tony's one receiving yard in that game. Again, serious football <laughs> fans only. Keep your TMZ, oh, TMZ that was a takes. Gr- that was a serious take. Again, I shouldn't have danced all over Kadarius Tony, a.k.a. Young Joker's grave. Although very enjoyable and funny, yes, it obviously created a karmic stir and imbalanced the cosmic football energies. My bad. Fourth, oh, this is so I would funny. like to take ownership over my uncontrolled optimism. I get it. I can't have anything nice. <laughs> Joe Judge taught me that one. But come on. This was supposed to be our year. <laughs> oh, sorry, Ryan. I hate to see you have your heart broken because for the past... Oh, I'm not done. Oh, okay. Keep going then. Lastly, I would like to take a moment to remember the fallen. It's very emotional. Okay. Born May 3rd, 1992. Mark Glowinski. May 3rd, 1992. We will remember Mark and how he attended GAR Memorial High School in wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. We will remember that his collegiate journey then took him to Lackawanna College in beautiful Scranton, Pennsylvania. We will also remember that he bravely accepted a scholarship to play at the University of West Virginia in the Catawba River Valley at the foothills of the Appalachians. We will also remember how Mark achieved his childhood dream of playing in the NFL when he was drafted by Pete Carroll of the Seattle Seahawks. We will also remember Mark wearing the beautiful white and blue, playing for Jim Irsay and the mighty Indianapolis Colts. And finally, this is hard. This is going to be tough for me to get out, Sean. Finally, we will remember Mark for playing one plus seasons of the worst fucking offensive guard play <laughs> that these two eyes has, have ever seen. And I watched Eric Flowers play for four seasons. <laughs> Rest in peace, Mark Lewinsky. <laughs> So you're putting it all on the guard there. No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. I don't know if you heard. Come on oh, yeah, in, bring Andrew. Andrew's in, Andrew. bringing oh, in some oh. whiskey. Shout out to Andrew. Subscribe to the uh, SGPN Fantasy Football Podcast. You're, you're a saint. <laughs> right. In a time of need. In a time of need. As you, if you weren't listening, I well, listed Well, we didn't off, even get I, to the score. The Giants lost I, 40 I'm, to nothing. I'm not done. The Dallas Cowboys unfortunately covered the spread. We were both on the I, li- I listed off four things before I talked about, may he rest in peace, Mark Kowinski. But if that motherfucker isn't dragged out on a boat <laughs> but a bu- but by a bunch of Dago, Guinea-looking, short, gold-chain-wearing Italian gentlemen for a little fishing trip, I'm going to have a problem with this situation. The one flaw in this front office was signing Mark Lewinsky. The one flaw of this coaching staff is continuing to play Mark Lewinsky. He is hindering the development of seemingly not improved at all, right guard, Evan Neal, seventh pick in the fucking draft. But maybe if the guy next to him wasn't a fucking turnstile who couldn't block in a phone booth, maybe he could improve. He was outplayed the entire preseason, and yet here he is, playing right guard for the New York football Giants. On top of that, there are a lot of other issues, but it starts there. And, yeah, I do think it's a good idea to bring Joe Judge in for a one-day contract. Maybe teach him how to run the third down QB sneak when they're getting their ass kicked. A bunch of bitches. <laughs> oh, wow. I so, okay. Anyway, we what can do, we... do the rest of the show now. Okay, great. Got uh, I'm, I'm a little sweaty right now. Feels cathartic, Ryan. I, uh, was pre- we, I was pretty, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, the good news good. is you're not tied to Danny Dimes long term. No, nope, no, nope, not at all. <laughs> oh, oh, you're bringing it. What? Well, you know what? Looking at the best ball leaderboard, not so fun. And, and you know what? I'll throw up a six thing. Yes. Put my hand up. I was, lo- I was, I was looking at all my sweet, sweet best ball teams and thinking like, wow, the Giants haven't even played yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ryan was. I'm it getting was, chirped it was, at by the fantasy community. It was, I'm getting chirped at by these just lower-than-life Cowboys fans. It was, um, it was just, uh, and, and everyone uh, who DM'd me about doing a wellness check on Ryan. Fuck your wellness check. He is alive. I'm a grown-ass man. I can't. Now, you I, know what? Turn that shit off. 
Those people that text message you, checking no, out, DM me, DM you, Twitter. They're not. It's not that personal. Okay. Probably Pentandy, that little bitch. <laughs> Subscribe to the Die Hard Eagles podcast if you want oh, to learn. Yeah. Listen to Sean, a oh, guy, with, a guy with be... really intelligent takes, oh. and then a little bitch. Well, We're... Ryan, it is just one of the one of our favorite segments on the Die Hard Eagles podcast is to go through the fans, the opposing fans subreddit, and it's just going to be, it is just going to be a Schadenfreude and uh, experience looking through that giant subreddit. Last thing I'll say: if the season ended today, Sean, you'd have seven days of mustache. Uh, 6.6, 6, but yes, uh, <laughs> congratulations to you, Darren Waller off to a uh, nice start there. 6.6 6 fantasy points, uh, Dallas Goddard zero, but again, we got the win. We got the cover. Hey, speaking of wins, speaking of covers, you can start yourself off with a nice little, uh, plus EV here. All you got to do five the trap King sports book app. Use that promo code S. GP. That's right. Oh man. Uh, just cannot get uh, again. DraftKings. We're pulling all our lines. So many fun bets. We're gonna be giving out a uh, same game parlay for the Monday night game later on in the episode. And of course, SGP. Use that promo code to get two hundred dollars in bonus bets instantly when you bet just five dollars on any NFL game. Download now. Use code SGP. Sign up. New customers can take home $200 of bonus bets instantly. Just for betting five bucks, it's just that easy. $200 bonus bets instantly just for betting five bucks. It's code SGP only on the DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details and state specific responsible gambling resources. Also brought to you by Game Time. Oh man, uh, you feel bad for the fans who had to go watch that game against the Dallas Cowboys and New York Giants. Hopefully, they got great prices, and if they use the Game Time ticketing app, uh, they did because Game Time has that low price guarantee. Use our promo code SGPN get twenty dollars off uh, the already low price. Again, if you can find tickets in the same section and row for less, you can't. You can try, but you cannot find. A cheaper ticket than uh, what Game Time is offering. Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code SGPN for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create the account, redeem the code SGPN for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, Kramer, uh, let's rattle off the games, talk some uh, big picture stuff that we got right. Some stuff that we got wrong. Uh, credit, a uh, positive for today, uh, Ryan. You were two and zero on your locks, so shout out to you. Yeah, I'm. Lo- you know, I'm. I'm an objective, unbiased handicapper, Sean. Yeah, plus as EV, I. plus EV. But well, as am I, and I. I went one and one with my locks, but I did give out the uh, the Los Angeles Rams on oh, the money line. Nice sweet, work, sweet money line dog. We were three and two on our circle millions. Uh, 60 percent but it's not too shabby and then we did advance with the ravens the baltimore ravens uh moving on that was better than last year so yes we outdid our bit i feel like uh we've we've hit on the uh lions chiefs but hats off to the lions getting the win and the cover 21 20 in kansas city we've already dug the grave for Kadarius tony and ryan already probably feeling bad about all the negative stuff he said about no, Kadarius no, I actually Tony. don't feel bad about any of it. I, if you I listen, feel bad that it affected the karmic energy. If you listen to Vison, I was pointing out it's, it reminded me of some of the games Nelson Aguilar had where you go, how, how can a receiver cost a team a game? Like what happened uh, with Nelson Aguilar and the same thing happened with Kadarius Tony. It's not like you dropped the ball, but he dropped it right into the guy's hands of Brian branch for the pick six. That to me really was the difference. Unlike some teams that lost uh, on prime time, I could see this Chiefs team uh, bouncing back. Can't, and uh, Detroit, hats off again. You're just going to take shots in every game. You're going to make some horrible connection. That was going to be my bit. But uh, hey, uh, remember when your grandmother died? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, like, yeah, that's, that's what you're doing. Oh, wow. It just right. happened. Though. Right. It okay. just happened. I thought, I thought you were. I thought you were able to process. Can it. we laugh at how fat Mike McCarthy looked with that skinny play, <laughs> play sheet? It really. 
Yeah, it's like it, they, they got to get, you know how like uh, giant fat people have stripes. They wear stripes. Yes. Maybe he can get his play calling sheet striped so he doesn't look as gigantic. Ryan, uh, I know you're, I know you used to be a Giants fan. You're now a Falcons fan. So congrats to your Falcons, oh. 24 to 10, getting the win. And uh, you gave it out. Tyler Algier to lead the NFC South in mm. rushing only one game in, but he currently is a top the leaderboard. I mean, I think like fantasy, uh, we were, we had both mentioned, we like Tyler Algier anytime touchdown. I gave him out in DFS, I think. And it was, it was still kind of a, an ugly game for Atlanta. I mean, they did get the win, but I, I don't think either of these, to me, this was just more about Bryce young, not looking that good. They, they are. Who he's we, just, he's just not ready. They are who we thought they are. Yeah. Uh, it's Frank Reich. The play calling left a little to be desired. Uh, Bryce Young, not there yet. They had a couple nice op- situations. And Kyle Pitts, two catches. Uh, can, can we at least agree that this Atlanta team came out and looked exactly as I prognosticated this offseason? Tyler Algier leading the team in carries, yeah. running back. Yeah, we Bijan said that. Bijan out a- wide, yep. being physical. Punching you in the mouth, and I think I even predicted this might be a blowout, Sean. Feeling good about my Falcons. Yeah, good start. <laughs> Again, they were getting the turnovers. That was the difference in the game. Uh, I mean, to me, I was out on Desmond Ritter long term. 15 of 18, 115 passing yards. I- I'm still not sold, but again, good win, division win, getting and, it done. And bye bye to the two people that picked the Panthers and the Survivor. Yes. I meant to mention that the, uh, I wanted to also say goodbye to the 68 people that picked the chief. So that's already seven people out. Oh man. And And I know you and cousin Bush were one of them, but I was rooting so hard against the commanders. It was was close. That was like basically half the pool. (laughs) And and what I was going to mention was that 31 people eliminated themselves by not getting their pick. That is insane. Why would you enter in a thousand dollars, the circus survivor and not get your picks in? Worst. How does that happen? Worst performance. Mark Lewinsky or the 31 people who didn't enter their picks in the survivor. <laughs> well, I'd say the 31 people, they didn't have, they're still uh, breathing. Yeah, so that's good. They didn't have a, uh, a pick to lose. Whereas, uh, do, Ryan, will he be playing next week as the starter? I, and you didn't answer the question. Hunger how do we, strike maybe until how he's do we out. Fix this giants team. I'm worried. And they're not going to be a close your eyes special for people asking. Uh, unless somehow they're a underdog to the Arizona Cardinals next week. Yeah, seven points. I'm hearing. Okay, the, catching seven, <laughs> massive dog. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, again, I have some more ideas of how to fix the team. We could. Um, well, first, you got to carry the dead off the battlefield. Yes. Uh, then maybe a locker room <laughs> fight club. Oh, I like that. I, I'll have more ideas sprinkled throughout the rest of the show. I don't Ra- want to waste them all right now. Ravens twenty-five, a uh, Texans nine. Again, fading the rookie quarterbacks seem to be a good angle here. I was on the Ravens, Ryan. You were on the Texans here. Th- maybe thinking uh, they could get a back door. It was looking all right for a little going. Bit. Yeah, I mean, it, to but, me, the the number felt a little bit big, but yeah, I had to go Ravens there. Although Lamar in the offense, I mean, Zay Flowers, I think probably a big winner there, but. Uh, they still seemed a little out of sorts. Thesis seemed accurate, but it just, they, they're too much. Too, and, you know, what? Get, guess what? J.K. Dobbins, who was holding out for more money, not taking his training serious. Tore Blue, yeah, tore his Achilles, so that sucks. I uh, mean, who saw that coming? Well, I mean, again, J.K. Dobbins, perpetually injured guy, yeah. and uh, Justice Hill had a nice day, uh, Daily Fantasy. I think he had two touchdowns, so... If you were, uh, if you were uh, on the Onions play of, of starting him, that, that paid off pretty big. Do you think anyone picked the Texans in the Survivor? <laughs> oh, they did. Three of them. That's, we're up to 104 now, Sean. All right. Taking yeah, them out. Like Cleveland Browns 24, Cincinnati Bengals 3. We were both on the Browns. I'm kind of uh, pissed off at myself for not locking this up. We were all over the, the, the angle of fading Cincinnati, of fading Joe Burrow, of Joe Burrow always struggling against this Cleveland Browns team again. I, I, I think I'll take, uh, I think this is kind of a common theme for week one, just a ton of sloppy play, even in the teams that got W's like Deshaun Watson, oh, some horrible, had parts. some bad interceptions, missed some wide open guys. That being said, they still won 24 to three. So uh decent game there. Oh, they, they, uh, as quote, Jamar Chase said, quote, we lost to some elves. Yeah. He said, I have the direct quote. Quote, I'm just frustrated because I called their ass elves and we just lost to some elves. 
<laughs> I like how he explained it. He connected the dots for us. Yes, he explained. Listen, I, I called them ass elves, and then uh, we ended up losing. What's an ass elf? Uh, I don't know. That's I, not, I mean, is that, uh, <laughs> that, that sounds like some Richard Gere stuff. So, yeah, so <laughs> we're going in pretty deep. That's hey, what, uh, that's what Richard a, Gere called his hamster, yeah. Brownie the Elf. We can't, <laughs> we can't oh. go back to the pet store. Ah, oh, poor hamster. Jacksonville Jaguars, 31. Indianapolis Colts, 21. I had the Colts plus five. They got down to the one-yard line. Right, a juicy backdoor opportunity. Anthony Richardson got banged up. They brought in Gardner Minshew. He could not get it in. So, uh, Jags win ugly because, again, they, like, they, they weren't dominating. They had some bad uh, turnovers, I thought. Uh, I mean, but also, uh, I guess on the positive Ridley looked pretty good with um, with uh, Goldie Locks there. So, what was your big takeaway there, Ryan? Uh, I mean, Trevor Lawrence did not look. Tre- Trevor Lawrence might be the Trevor Lawrence we thought. I'll say Anthony Richardson looked all right for in term. He looked obviously he went over his passing total. He went a little bit. He looked better than I thought. A lot of that passing was like, you know, that Michael Pittman throw that he threw one yard and Pittman ran forty. But yeah, okay. He looked okay. I think the the stuff they're doing though, like he clearly has a problem reading defenses, mm. and if it's not just him running, which he's already banged up, that has to make you a little concerned. So yeah, Jags again. This this team is going to struggle against physical teams. I think. Yeah, they hung around, but um, ultimately, you know, uh, is Trevor Lawrence currently in the lead for interceptions? Oh, he's got to be. He how many did he throw? Oh no, he, I think he only threw one. He fu- it was fumbles. Yeah, he had a uh, <laughs> he fumbled it forward. The receiver caught it, thought the play was dead, was just standing there with the ball, and then they immediately knock it out, pick it up, and scoop and score. It was a very uh, just guys not paying attention at all in that game. Uh, next up, we got the Tampa Bay Bucks getting it done, winning outright, twenty to seventeen. Ryan, I told you. Baker woke up feeling dangerous. That game just kind of ended too. Like we're in this big room watching football games and all of a sudden it's like, damn, did the Bucks just win? Yeah. They go, Whoa. At Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousining. Oh, I mean, well, it what's wasn't the take even, on this? Wasn't even prime time. What was the, t- what's you the, like that? I, you like that? I don't even know that I had, a, I feel like for the most part, I was watching the Vikings kind of move the ball. Yeah. And then they just weren't getting it done. Uh, it, very strange game to me. I don't have a lot of takeaways from this other than, yeah, perhaps I was overzealous to lay that many points with, with the Vikings. But when that offense was working, it was working. It's just, I, I don't know. Like, Kirk Cousins has some sort of block. Yeah, but, I, 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 uh, interception was big. I mean, you look at <laughs> you look at their stat line, and you're kind of confused as to how they won the game. Justin Jefferson, 9 for 150. Again, didn't get I mean. a touchdown. He still f- figures out some way. Not to get a touchdown, even when he dominates. Uh, Madison with a receiving touchdown. Uh, Jordan Addison as well with the touchdown there. And then Mike Evans and Trey Palmer each uh, got one, and they got a couple of field goals. The Bucks were just kind of hanging around. They were doing, I thought, again, as a guy who gave out Bucks to win the division, I thought their defense uh, was, was better than people expected. I thought Baker can win you certain games. He has the heart of a lion. Like, that, that – First down he got with his legs and lowered his shoulder and took a shot. It just shows you this kid's got some, uh, got some grits, got uh, some tenacity. It's like an Eminem song. This is his last shot. Yeah. Uh, but so, all Nothing right. So this was the big one. Vikings knocked 1,044 people oh, huge. out of the survivors. So if we're, if we're doing the math at home, that's 148 plus the 10 that I didn't mention about the Bengals. So now we're at 1,058 people already eliminated. I, awesome. I love when this kind of shit happens. It is great. Uh, and and I, could you imagine, I mean, the people that were on some of these favorites in hindsight, because uh, even the commanders, it was just, it was a shit show. None of these teams should have been laying this many points. No, no. I mean, I, I, th- yeah, it, well, the trend will continue, but uh, super ugly game here. It was one of uh, my locks. Very fortunate to get the, the, the cover here. Saint 16. Titans 15 as far as, and there's a lot of like big preseason stuff we were right about and certainly wrong about for me. I mean, I thought Ryan Tannehill could be competent and with his weapons, I thought could put together some good offense. Their offense looked disastrous. I mean, he had Chico Conquo wide open for an easy touchdown overthrow him. He had another overthrow for an easy touchdown 
uh, threw a bunch of interceptions, some of which were his fault, some weren't. He just looked really, I mean, he just looked really perplexed back there. Uh, that being said, like Tennessee was in the game the entire time. And then it was, it was getting to close. Like they were driving down there. They were down four points. They kicked the field goal to cut it to one point. Cause they had uh, three timeouts and a two minute warning. So shout out to you, uh, Mike Vrabel, uh, Derek Carr, emotional celebration after getting the win. They didn't Did look, he huddle his kids up on the field and say, you can do anything if you, you put can your... do anything you want? Uh, he didn't look, he didn't look that good. I, I don't think either team, I, I guess both teams defenses look better than I thought. I, neither team offense looked that good. Yeah. I mean, it, they didn't run the ball very well. That's why Tyler Algier is leading the, the division in rushing. Yeah. I, I mean, the takeaway here is it's classic Titans gross game. The offense looked horrible. I, I can't, either Tannehill's just completely washed up or that. They have to get better for the next game. I well, do. And I think Saints some of it might was have the Saints a good, defense. Yeah, the Saints have a good legit. defense. They're going to take D hop out of the Latimer is going to take someone out of the game. So you have all of that. Um, curious to see that Spears out snapped uh, Derrick Henry. Perhaps that was some of the two minute drill stuff they were running. But yeah, I mean, this is a classic Tennessee cover and shout out to Vrabel for making sure he cut it to a one score game. Oh, yeah. I mean, just That's beautiful just classic football game. When you're down four football and guy. When you're down four and you have an opportunity to kick a field goal, uh, field goal, one possession <laughs> better than touchdown one possession. Well, and people always ask like, what's the, you know, why go to a sports book? You can just watch in your house and, and, and bet on the DraftKings Sportsbook app, which is obviously a, an awesome experience. Love watching and betting uh, over uh, at our studio with God's eye there. But there is something electric when Tennessee decides to kick that field goal and it goes in and half the sports book just goes nuts cheering because they cut it to one point. Imagine someone who has no idea. The yeah. context is watching. Why do you this care? Like, you guys are still losing. Oh no. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. Are we, are we, Hey, if you're tired of losing, uh, have you signed up for hall of fame bets yet? You should win bigger by betting smarter this NFL season with hall of fame bets. The sports betting analytics platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Research every NFL, NBA, MLB, and soccer bet with historical stats and data. Enter any parlay idea. And uh, I was doing this earlier, Ryan, uh, getting ready for our Monday Night Football, our DJ's parlay. I was entering in some ideas, some of which Hall of Fame bets uh, was rejected uh, because they got a parlay optimizer, a tool to get hit rates broken down by leg, as well as expected probability. For the entire parlay, sort all players by hit rate for any bet to learn which players are hot, which picks have value. All the all the stuff you do when you're looking at your player props, like going through all those trends. Hey, how do they play against this team, indoor, outdoor, all that kind of stuff. Uh, they're great at, at, at scraping that data and, and kind of giving you the, uh, the best odds as far as what's going to hit, what's not. Stop putting it in the dark and join over 30,000 users researching with Hall of Fame bets to craft Ryan, you love this. You love artisanal crafted parlays mm. with more intelligent data-driven parlays. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit HallOfFameBets.com and use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month today. Start researching. Start winning with Hall of Fame Bets. And that is HOFBets.com, promo code SGPN. Another uh, game we were way off on, Ryan. Pittsburgh Steelers just got their ass kicked. I want to pull up that... <clears throat> We got to find that clip of the uh, of the Texans uh, Longhorns uh, baseball coach. I think has has passed away. Augie Garrido, I think. Excellent. Rant. He has some excellent rants where he's speaking to his team about how uh, you know they've never been into a street fight because they're too soft and a bunch of pussies. But uh, if they if they knew what a street fight was like, they just got the ever living shit kicked out of them. I need. And then when I would go and I'll visit you in the hospital. And when you finally wake up after they're done, sewing you up, I'm going to give you the story of how, how you got your ass kicked. And, and that's really what happened. Uh, shout out to producer cam of golf gambling podcast. He's in the other room, but if we could take that clip and just put Dable's head over uh, oh, the wow. coach's body and, and just repurpose that, that, that might be amazing. If it hasn't already been done, that feels like that feels like an original right there. Dable's uh, big fat head, sweaty. <laughs> just rah, 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 rah. Ca uh, Cameron in the chat saying, "Story of the game: Nick Bosa zero sacks, T.J. Watts three sacks, two forced fumbles. That's why I bet on the Steelers. I thought that defense would be enough. And as much as it pains me, Brock Purdy looked pretty good uh, in Pittsburgh. That's a tough environment. So again, hats off to uh, the Purd man going in, getting it done on the road." 
I, I still think there's a chance the Steelers straighten things out. I, I think really they just got their ass kicked up front on the offensive line, and it was very clear. Like once, once the 49ers were getting that kind of penetration, they just could not – they couldn't adjust after that. Yeah, he's one of those guys who will get penetration. Audio is on for this game uh, in the Barry Manilow Theater over at the Westgate. And, Shout out to the Barry oh, Manilow Theater. Just a beautifully dark, peaceful place to watch football. Fortunately, the Giants didn't play. That would have ruined the, the whole. That would have ruined the whole thing <laughs> if that was happening at at uh, 10 a.m. Oh yeah, luckily, uh, luckily you got to you got you got to be on that island. Uh, where everyone gets yeah. to enjoy. Yeah, even better. Bigger chip on your shoulder. We're, we're back. <laughs> I'm back. D. Bettis in the I'm chat, uh, fellow Eagles fan, saying, uh, Kramer, our Dan Jones uh, shirt's 99% off. Are we going to do some sort of uh, merch sale for uh, sad Giants fans? The chat wants to know. I, I, think it's, I think it's in poor taste to bring it up. Do we do, we do a Mark Lewinsky shirt? And just put the... <laughs> R.I.P. Mark Lewis, yeah, in the year 1992 in... <laughs> to 2023. R.I.P. Mark. And just have. A, Are they going to get rid of him? I I don't know how. It you, is great how we just keep coming back. I to don't the Giants, know how, but I, it is. It, it it's it's really tough for me. I, I'm very torn. No, oh, this is how the internet works, Sean. People know, like to I, see people get hurt. Yeah, that's why I, they watch but, people get kicked in the nuts. That's why they watch. <laughs> that's why Jackass was successful. That's you why were these, watching the clip show where Ryan gets. Uh, Gets his balls kicked, uh, the, the football version. It happens every I season. wish I could be happier. I just wish it was some other team that kicked your ass because mm. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, celebrate a Cowboys victory. I'm, I'm really torn here, but I still am, am finding some joy in just mm. the undressing of the Giants as an organization. I, uh, Justin, um, co-host of the Dire Eagles podcast, did send over He's the little bit. a reminder that Chip Kelly uh, never got shut out. Just a little a reminder. Who will coach more games as a head coach, Chip Kelly or Brian Dable? Brian Dable. Again, we have serious football fans listening. Yes. You're embarrassing yourself with these TMZ texts. <laughs> oh, well, Ryan, I, I don't you don't drop the e bomb. Embarrassing on, on on night of all nights. We've are you are you pulling out the rearview mirror? <laughs> uh, we're moving past. We're, moving, we're looking at you ahead. pulled out the rearview mirror to literally d do a eulogy and dig a guy's grave. I, if we're going to have a wake for uh, with the, the Polak you keep talking about, can we at least get a spread? Can we get some cold cuts or something? Yeah, they're out in the green room. Okay. Well, they, they do have a nice spread here. Arizona Cardinals 16, the Washington Commanders. Hail the Commanders. Great, uh, great work, Commanders. They, you guys took care of business 20 to 16, did not cover the spread. Nope. Noted, uh, Ryan, like I said, uh, on our Beeson show, you don't fade... NASA, you don't fade our space program, especially on the road. Hey, Josh jo Dobbs showed up. Jonathan Gannon's defense traveled. Uh, I thought the defense played pretty well. And uh, if it wasn't for, like, um, you know, a couple of mistakes here by Dobbs, I, I think they, uh, they had a legit chance to win that uh, game. Yeah, I mean, Washington's def defense, at the end of the day, closed the door. But, you know, up until that point, weren't looking that great. I would say. I mean, I, the sliding scale of what what is possible in terms of the floor where bad is has changed for, for since Sunday commanders? night football has happened. No, oh. just overall, like my in, in NFL, the national football, my NFL power rankings. Okay. I, I actually have. There's a gap between team 31 and team uh, 41. Giants wow. are currently 41. Wow. Yeah. Oh, we need to get uh, sh Josh. I got Georgia ahead of them. Josh, I, if you're listening, can we get a, USC uh, ahead can of we them. get a Ryan's power rankings graphic up with a, a Newark Giants at 41? <laughs> oh, you have to put the Cardinals ahead of the Giants power yep. rankings. Yep. You just have to. They, they score play points. competitive football. They, no, the goal of the game is to <laughs> score points. They scored 16 I, and they only allowed 20. Now let's take a look over at the Giants. They scored zero. They allowed 40. It's not good. Brian, keep the, taking, keep, keep using these TMZ takes. Th this will cheer you up. A quarterback almost as bad as Daniel Jones, Justin Fields lost twenty to thirty-eight uh, again to the Green Bay Packers. We were all on the Green Bay Packers. Uh, Luke Musgrave should have had like two touchdowns. Jordan Love, like I feel like the only couple of bad passes he had was throwing to uh, my boy Luke Musgrave. It's still, it's still a good game uh, for him, and uh, the Packers were rolling. We and, nailed it. We 100% nailed the yes. Packers take. This is one we were 100% It, it took us a little to get there, but we kept hypothesizing. What if Aaron Rodgers leaving this offense would put it back into structure and it'd be a run-first team with a little bit of play action and a good defense? And yeah. Ding, ding, ding. 
Aaron Jones. 420 to win the division, Sean? Woo! Yeah. I know, uh, I know uh, John Jackson gave out Aaron Jones on our DFS show. I think you, yeah, I if you didn't play lineups. him in there, but you were, you were high on him. He led the team in uh, receiving yards with 86, rushing yards 41, uh, and that was two catches for 86 yards, uh, rushing touchdown, receiving touchdown. Again, Luke Musgrave, uh, close second there, three for 50. Should have had a touchdown, but um, nice game overall. And, I mean, the Bears picked up where they left off, right? And and I mean that as an insult. They they just really can't do anything on defense. And their offense has a couple big plays, but mostly it's in garbage time. And, you know, they pad the stats. It doesn't look as bad uh, when you look at some of their numbers, but it really, they, they felt out of sorts the entire game. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> not much to add. I, I don't know. No, they look bad. Uh, Denver Broncos. Well, actually, I did have one more thing yeah. to add. Uh, you made a comment about Dan Jones there. Dan Jones yes. did have twice as many wins last season as uh, Justin Fields has well, had his Ryan, entire career. Now they are tied because it's about this season, the 2023. That's a good point. Dolphins, Chargers, or no, sorry, uh, Broncos, Raiders. Broncos 16, uh, Raiders 17. Broncos didn't get the win, didn't get the cover. This was a tough one. I, I started talking myself into it a little bit more. I think since we landed in Vegas, hearing all the discontent with the Raiders players, all the rumors swirling, Fucking Chandler Jones fake. going off the deep end. and Nothing uh, matters. And he, he completely lost it. And apparently it didn't make that big of a difference because Russell Wilson still looked fairly rough. I, again, I thought the Denver defense played really well. Uh, overall, Denver's offense just continues to struggle. They, they missed an extra point early. Soon as it happened, turned to everyone in the sportsbook. Everyone had the same thought. No way that matters. That extra point, of course, was ended up being a big difference in the game. Uh, hats off to the Raiders for going on the road and getting this uh, road dub. Lutz also missed the field goal. Yeah, that, that probably mattered as well. And I'm, I, I don't know how I let you talk me into the Broncos in this one. I, oh, wow. I, I appreciate I this the elevation. Was about no, no, I, I, but I, I'm going to share my, a couple of notes I had when we were talking about this game on the pick show. Yeah. Raiders, 4-0 ATS last two seasons against the Broncos. Yes. Sean Payton, 2-6 and uh, ATS in his past eight season openers. Start slow. Fuck. But I like the, again, I Russ like looks the. looks like shit. I like the elevation. Same way I liked uh, Colorado. Uh, the Buffaloes. The, 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 that NFL elevation. podcast. Okay. We coming. We coming. We came. Uh, whoa, Chargers. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, come on. We got, we'll, we'll, when we'll have to bleep that out. Chargers 34. For the record, I, I didn't come. Sean came. No. Uh, yeah. Dolphins 36. Oh, Chargers. We, you son of a bitch. Los Angeles Chargers. I came into the season. I even talked to Ryan on the future show. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not doing it. Ryan, you always get sucked into the Chargers. Not this guy. Not old Sean Green. See it coming mile away. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're not gonna pull me in. And then I see, oh, Teron Armstead, injury news. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm a sharp. Look, there that that line isn't even that number isn't even factored in. They they announced him out and the line didn't change. The starting left tackle. You got Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack. They combined for zero sacks. They got no sacks of Tua. Didn't even get to use his judo belt. I mean, uh, how is he ever going to get to brown belt from orange belt if he doesn't get sacked and show his amazing ability to fall? Hats off to you, Big Rob and Dolphins fans who are chirping at me in, in the mentions. Tua went off 466 passing yards, uh, three MVP. touchdowns. MVP. Two, uh, MVP. Tyree killed 215 yards and two touchdowns. So you just got to remember the Chargers can't cover anyone. Uh, this was... This was Chargers charging at a, an amazing Charger level. They 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 mid season four. Can, can you? What I like to think about as well is think about this relative to Shanahan. Yeah. Think about how much better Tyree Kill must be than Debo Samuel. I mean, I, I know Ayuk had a big game today, but yeah, he's he running. He's running in the same system, and he's fucking wide open every play. And, and honestly. It's hilarious because Tua gets shit for underthrowing Tyreek Hill. He's just fucking fast. Like I think I think the reality Cheetah. is if we went back and watched Patrick Mahomes throw to Tyreek Hill, there's probably some balls that he that, like if it was Tua throwing it would be like, "Oh, look at that fucking underthrow." 
I, I don't know. I think my Brian, are you starting a new two and on chapter here? In Las no, Vegas? but as you know, I collected a lot of divi division winners this off season. And so why not diversify my love since I keep getting my heart broken and the dolphins, one of my division winners, they look amazing. Yeah. They look amazing. I offense is great. De the key though is the defense. I thought the defense was key was it came up big when they needed to. It wasn't one of those like shut them down games, but when they needed a stop, they did, they got yeah, it. And, and that's and, the difference and kudos with Vic Fangio. To the, kudos to Miami defense, but really it was Justin Herbert and these yeah. Los Angeles Chargers just also small dog energy. Coming up small. You cannot trust this team. I'm kicking myself. I thought, all right, one game. And of course, even the Dolphins, there's videos of a SoFi erupting in cheers. Where the fuck are all these Dolphins fans coming from? No I no idea. I did see I, a that, that game was the one that probably pissed me off the most this Sunday. I did see a Ray Finkel jersey at oh, the that's pretty uh, bad Westgate today. So that, that was, was probably awesome. Colby. No, my, I'm, my, kidding. My, I'm kidding. The guy was watching football. It, it, oh yeah, Colby's not too big in it. I mean, serious though, is two is two of the favorite for the MVP right now? Week yeah. one, yeah. yeah. How could he not? Is, he, is he Tyree carried, Kill the favorite for, for offensive, offensive player, player of the year? Of the year. Hmm, one of us has a ticket. Let's though. sell. <laughs> I'm selling my two of stock. All right, next up, Philadelphia Eagles 25, New England Patriots 20. Eagles get the win. Eagles get the cover. Never in doubt. Got off to a hot start. Kind of were waffling there for a bit. I would say this game, this game really reminded me a lot of their uh, last year, how they started out first game in Detroit, road game, uh, you know, road favorite. Not the easiest game. There are some moments where you're like, hey, what are they doing? Tom Brady in the house. Tom Brady. It's a baby fucking wheel, man. Bunch of positives, uh, one of which being Jalen Carter. Jalen Carter recorded six pressures and a sack on 32 pass rushes in his NFL debut. Tied for the most pressures by any rookie defensive tackle in a game over the last five seasons. I thought the defensive line played really well. I thought Kobe Dean getting banged up and just in general, our linebacking core, I, I felt like got exploited. A lot of dink and dunk stuff. I think Belichick had some scheme things he oh. did to take advantage of our new defensive coordinator and probably even new offensive coordinator play caller. I think it was, I think, and even Sirianni said this after the game that maybe he's going to consider playing a little bit more in the preseason. Felt like the guys were a bit rusty and you definitely saw that out there. However, they came up when they needed to. They made big plays when they needed to, uh, including the defensive line. I thought the defensive line was the start of the game. I, I wish they would have got A.J. Brown going even more. I felt like he was unguardable. And then Dallas Goddard has to get involved in the game more. Fantasy-wise, Kenny Gainwell. We kept telling you to be draft Kenny Gainwell uh, is like round 18 in best ball. Put him in your DFS lineup. He just, he, I, I'll be surprised if he gets that workload consistently, but he, he was like the bell cow back for the Eagles. He, he got surprised. Yeah. He got steamed all the way up to like a 10th round guy. And still it Rashad Penny inactive. Yeah. Austin Scott got a carry before Deandre Swift. So go, no, go figure. It seems well, like and, it's and, Gainwell's job to lose. I, I will ask you a serious question. Okay. I'm As serious, you know, man. I know ball I, and you claim to know ball. I, I did feel like the play calling. Like first game, I'll give him, I'll give him a pass, but that was not the same Eagles team as last year, in my opinion. Like there were times where I thought it was it was specifically like the play call that let them down. Yeah, I felt like their play call. AJ Brown was open every play. And they they weren't going. To. No, and and they they started doing that uh, towards the end when they really needed it. I think again they were rusty. They just hadn't seen game action together. So I not think, worried about the new play caller. Uh, overall. Uh, I would say, no, I don't think that's fair. I mean, I, I think this was a bad first performance. I'm optimistic they're going to rebound against the Vikings defense Thursday night at home. If they struggle to put up points against the Vikings, I think then I'll be concerned. Outdoors, on the road, against New England, dealing with weather, dealing with opening day. There's a lot of, I'm not going to make excuses, but there's a lot of reasons where maybe they're not firing on all cylinders, which I think clearly the offense wasn't. I, I think they will bounce back. And you still saw in got to have it moments, they came up with big plays. So one to know. No, I mean, a Bill O'Brien greater than Matt, Pat Pat or Matt Patricia. Yeah. 100%. And, and the stuff that they were doing, I felt like was just fairly simplistic stuff. The Eagles, again, they were just like, 
a lot of like a simplistic stuff that the Eagles should be able to stop, but they just they, their linebackers were put in bad spots. They were they it were exploiting of, the Eagles' weakness on defense. Reminded me of watching the Giants linebackers last year. Oh, Ryan. Get, get I, don't know, I don't know why. I don't know why you you want to talk about the Giants more, but no, last year. The oh, Giants okay. team last year. Pay attention. Oh, hey. pay attention to the show. Oh, I'm listening. making a comparison to the horrible linebackers they had last year. <laughs> they are Giants are on a cold run, Ryan. Are you are? Dable's I'm sorry, officially. I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you're saying. Say that again. Dable officially on the hot seat. No, he's Rams. Not. Oh no! I know that is 100% what's, I, that's what's great about the Giants uh, organization. Even if a coach deserves to be fired, they will not fire him. Rams thirty, Seattle thirteen. We all had the Rams catching the points. I gave out Rams on the money line. Uh, Geno Smith looks like shit. I, I, it was one of my big preseason takes coming in that Geno Smith was going to write you back, and his letter was going to say, "Hey, I'm Geno. I suck now." And we saw that in in a huge uh, way. And I also thought Matt Stafford looked really sharp. I mean, he was moving around the pocket. He scrambled for like a first down, picked up 10 yards. Uh, Puka Nakua said like a rookie receiving Ooh. record. Shout out to Andrew Robb, now SGPN Fantasy Football. He had been uh, mentioning Puka Nakua as like a best ball guy a bunch of times during the season. Uh, RIP to Ben Skowernick. In general, I thought the Rams defense played pretty well. There's a hilarious clip going uh, around where uh, Geno Smith <laughs> drops back to pass and Aaron Donald runs a stunt and it's just Aaron Donald running unblocked to Geno Smith. And he goes, <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> it's really good. It was like, oh my God. He goes, oh my God. And, I mean, uh, throws it away. Uh, it, again, I just picture Gino after. Geno sucks. So Geno, he, he got all those letters, right? He yep. didn't. He didn't write back. Then he got the big contract. He fired up Tinder and just started swiping right <laughs> out of control. And now he sucks again. Gino, 16 for 26, 112, and a touchdown. Matt Stafford, 24, 38, 334. <coughs> I guess the other surprising thing. Uh, <coughs> oh, sorry. And uh, Puka Nakua and Tutu Atwell both had 120 oh, yeah. receiving yards. That was pretty crazy. Uh, I, I guess Kyron Williams, worth noting, uh, was was kind of surprising to me. I mean, Cam Akers got all the carries, but Kyron Williams got all the yards. Cam Akers, and the, that's the reason I played him in DFS. I, I thought he would get a ton of carries. He did. 22 carries, only 29 yards. He did get in the end zone. Kyron Williams, though, 15 of 52 with two touchdowns. So someone to keep an eye on fantasy was. I, I mean, I, I don't want to throw a conspiracy theory out there, but it did it did seem like they were blocking a little harder for the Williams kid. No, and, and maybe all he that... just had more pop or more, more get up or something, but it just seemed like the plays where Williams was out there were well blocked. And then Cam Akers would come out and there just would be nothing. Yeah. And I don't think he had 22 carries. Are you sure about that? I'm looking at the ESPN uh, box score. Oh, wow. Cam Akers, 22 carries, 29 yards. Unless I'm, I'm wow. feel free to correct me, Ryan. Uh, no, I, I'm going to look it up. It just see, it anecdotally seems very It didn't wrong. seem like he was getting that much action. Unless it was all garbage time. Uh, Maybe this, it might've been when they were trying to like run the clock down, but I'm with you. Like I, it felt like it no. was a pretty 50, oh, 50 wow. yeah, right. uh, split. That's early wild. On. How do you average 1.3? That's gotta be a glitch. They ran the ball 40. They ran the ball 40 times. I think they had a ton of plays in the second half. Like they just controlled the ball. They threw the ball 38 times and they ran the ball 40 times. Yeah. I mean, Seattle wow. just could not slow them down. Wow. Tough times for the uh, Seattle Seahawks. So they uh, lose 30 to 13. Ryan, most surprising team NFL week one. Who, who is it for you? Surprise. <sighs> I, I mean, guess for you, it would obviously be the Giants the Gi and a well, negative surprise, but like positive surprising. Uh, I mean, I wasn't surprised. I think a lot of people will be surprised how uh, effective the Falcons were. Uh, kind of like taking a game. Like this is the kind of game the Falcons are going to play. They're going to play a close game, but their, their physical style is going to wear teams down and they're going to end up winning big. So I guess a little bit of a surprise. I, I don't know. I, the Raiders, I'll, I'll say the Raiders. Jimmy G celebrating with, like, glorious fist pumps. That I, was did, pretty I crazy. did not expect that. 
Yeah, I mean, for me, it's the Browns. I, I thought this would be a good spot for them. But again, they won 24-3. No. to three. Like, they, they shut out this Joe This is what Burrow. they do, though. But this is what they do. The no, defense is great. But to show, if go back and watch the replay of Deshaun Watson rolling out, test, no one yeah. around him and throwing it right to the Bengal. I, I think there's still a little to be de- – but that says a lot about how good their run game is, how good their defense is. Yeah. Uh, all right, Ryan, time to move over to Monday Night Football. Going to give out some of our favorite higher and lowers over on Underdog Fantasy. Again, use, uh, use the NFL. Pick them over there underdogfantasy.com promo code SGPN 100% deposit bonus up to $100. I'll start uh, with the free square they're giving out. Again, you pick three, you get plus 600 if you go three for three. Aaron Rodgers higher a half passing yards. That's one of their free promos. I think I think it's a $10 max, but $10 to win 60 if you get the other two. Great start. Um, Cheater. For, no, that wasn't that wasn't my official play, Ryan. My first one Oh, you, you gave you give out unofficial plays? Was that a lean? Oh, that was actually technically part of the read. I mean, it was so oh, interweaving. I I'm leaning. Interwo- I was so woven in with content, Ryan. You, yeah. as the uh, undiscerning listener, couldn't even tell the difference. I'm going to lean higher on that half. Garrett Wilson uh, is my first pick here. Give me a higher 67 and a half receiving oh. yards. He's had two games against the uh, Bills, 170 yards. I, I think Rodgers has a way of locking in on a particular target. And this particular target is Garrett Wilson. Also, Garrett Wilson is just a fucking dog. He's so fun to watch. I think he can match up decently against his Bills secondary. And again, he was getting these numbers with like Zach Wilson and Joe Flacco. I think you put Aaron Rodgers in there. He's getting to 68 yards. Uh, yeah, I have the same one. I'll go right to my second. I, mean, the Garrett, I don't understand where this price comes from. It feels weird. Because on top of what he did last year, so if you let's say you're a rear view mirror, bro, you, you <laughs> sorry, I, I, at this point, we're a lot of whiskeys and, and everything's coming together right now. Woo, it's smoking my weed. You, you got to project him to have even more usage yes. than last year and a better quarterback. So, yeah, love the over 70, uh, 76 and a half. Josh Allen, give me higher seven rushing attempts, higher than seven rushing attempts. Again, just looking back to the games last year against the Jets, which, by the way, what do the Jets do well, Sean? They get after the quarterback a little bit. They're going to put some pressure on Josh. What is Josh going to do? He's going to go beat Josh, and he's going to run the ball. So seven rushing attempts. Uh, went over this total both times last time or last year. So give me higher. All right, for me, next up, and, yeah, I like that one as well. I'm going to fade rookie tight ends that are not – Luke Musgrave that are in some sort of competition at the tight end position. I'm going Dalton Kincaid lower two and a half receptions. Now I could get burned here because, Oh, uh, they actually split him wide and they give him a ton of work. I just, it's just tough for rookie receivers to have this kind of volume. You have Gabe Davis, you have Stefan Diggs, you have Stefan Diggs who gets super pissed. If you don't throw it to Stefan Diggs, you have Josh Allen running. You have the, obviously the bills running backs. Uh, like he's competing again with Dawson Knox, a guy they paid. It's just a lot. And then you also have to be uh, efficient enough to complete those three catches. So give me Dalton Kincaid lower two and a half receptions. Nah, that's, that feels dang. That's going to be a risky. That's going to be a sweat. You know, they run the 11 and a half personnel, Sean. That's where they line up the tight end out wide. Cause he's half receiver, half tight end. Anyway. All right. Uh, moving along, Mr. Hardman who I don't know how much he's going to be involved in the rotation. They, they dangle the prop, 17 and a half receiving yards. I'm probably just making a bet that he catches a pass here. I don't think he's going to catch a pass. I'm going lower. Miko Hardman, uh, again, did not seem to be a guy that was working his way into the trust circle with, yeah. with Aaron. And, you some know, guys are in, some guys are out. And he's, I don't think he's in, so lower, 17 and a half, lower than 17 and a half receiving yards. Uh, last one for me, Gabe Davis, lower 46 and a half receiving yards. He's his average is 39 and a half uh, per game against the Jets. I'm just kind of banking on this Jets passing defense to to be able to do well against uh, the uh, the against Josh Allen, who has struggled again. Nine touchdowns, eight interceptions in his uh, games against the Buffalo Bills, and he's he's looked kind of rough at times. Uh, certainly stat wise, it hasn't been his uh, best team to match up against. And then you throw in the fact that, Hey, I think their offense will be a little bit better, a little less opportunity for Josh Allen. So Gabe Davis under 40 
uh, six and a half receiving yards. The the worry with Gabe Davis is he can obviously bust it in one play, but I'm I'm taking the lower here. What do you got, Kramer? Last one, and then first <laughs> touchdowns, and then DJ. No, only. I, I already. Oh, I'm choking here. I already gave out Garrett Wilson. Okay, that's right. <laughs> well, Ryan's collecting himself. I'm sorry, I'm cho- it's, I'm getting very choked up here. <laughs> I'm also wasn't that drunk. wasn't that during your eulogy? Uh, also during my eulogy. <laughs> All right, time for first touchdown action. Okay, I got a, uh, I got one, two, three, four. I got, I got three. I'm giving out, and then one I'm giving out, courtesy of a fan, oh, uh, who sent one in. First up, Trent Sherfield, thirty to one, uh, for the Buffalo Bills. He's a new guy they've hmm. added. I been poking over my shoulder. No, it, Trent Sherfield. If you look at at least the role he was used in uh, Miami. It was a lot of like red zone scheme up um, tunnel screens, that kind of stuff. Uh, he had two uh, touchdowns last year. He's used in the red zone. I think he's pretty fun play at 30 to one. Uh, the other one for the jets, Randall Cobb, 25 to one. If you watched, uh, if you watch hard knocks, uh, uncle Aaron, it, it's, it's clear. They have some sort of a deep, deep friendship. If he is, He's pressured at all. I think he's going to be looking at Randall Cobb uh, next. Will, up, will Randall Cobb be on the field? Well, that's that's why it's twenty five to one, right? Yeah. Uh, this one also, you have to question whether this guy is going to be on the field. But if he is, look out! He's a touchdown machine. Maybe they get a little cute here. Division game. Reggie Gilliam, ninety to one. He's uh sec. He's probably like the third tight end for the Bills. Some people have him listed as a fullback. But I, I like his, uh, I, here's a guy had a red zone catch last time they played a primetime game. I think it was the Bengals game where they ended up calling the game. I had him hundred to one first touchdown. He got tackled at the three yard line, AKA we're due baby. Uh, the next one, this is from a listener and shout out to Ryan, uh, Newtendorf, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. What's up, Ryan. He sent it in and he said, uh, been in the lab all night, cooking up some props for my jets tomorrow. Just remember you heard it here first. Jeremy Ruckert, 90 to one first touchdown. He's, uh, he's uh, deep on the, on the jets roster. Well, Sean, you remember him. You know how you, I know that you remember most people listening will remember who Jeremy Ruckert is. He went to Ohio state and when he got yeah. drafted by the, 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 the jets, his dad said, J E T S <laughs> jets, jets, jets. He scored a touchdown in the preseason. He yeah. certainly popped on the system. And, and he's, he's the classic backup tight end for a touchdown system. Uh, Jets only carrying two tight ends, CJ Uzoma and Jeremy Ruckert. I would not be. Wait, where's Conklin? I, I don't know if he's, uh, if he's on the uh, IR or what they did with him, but he's not on the, uh, I don't think he's on the 53. I'm looking at the Jets depth chart. I don't see him. What? I'm looking. Tyler Conklin is the starter. Ruckert's the third string. Well, you you got to talk to the Jets depth chart then. Okay, that's weird. You sure they he is in? A, no, I mean I'm looking at our lad. So I I I just, you trust I, them over New York Jets. I, I've heard no, I've I've heard nothing about Ruck, or uh, Conklin being out. Drafted a lot of fantasy teams. I don't know if you've heard. I even did one without any paper or notes. Well, nothing. then someone needs to get to NewYorkJets.com and and let them know that. All uh, right, so you. you you're trusting the uh, the old internet. Again, oh, Sean. so this is this no, fuck you, NewYorkJets.com. They have two tight ends listed on their depth chart. One Tyler Conklin's a starter, and then on the other C.J. Uzoma's the starter, and then they have Jeremy Ruckert as the backup oh, they, for both of them. That's super confusing. They have two tight t- tight ends on their starting depth chart. Yeah, so they're running twelve personnel. Either way, Jeremy Ruckert. Long story short, is gonna get involved. I love the 90 to one long shot there for first touch. Wow. I, how we missed each other with these 90 to ones. <laughs> Cause I, Rucker's a great angle. I, I didn't want to go that angle for the jets. I, I kept it simple. I and, went, and Joe pointed out, I think we hit Disley in this game last year, Monday night opener. You are correct, sir. That was a, a sweet 35 to one cash. So uh, I started the card with Garrett Wilson plus nine fifty. Uh, again, I, I don't know where. I don't know where else he's going to look. I, I, I didn't want to get cute with this one. This is almost like just taking the favorite who's obviously going to see the pass. Aaron Rodgers' first touchdown is going to be a pass. Come on. Do we agree? He's not going to fucking hand it off. He's gonna, he wants the glory. He's going <laughs> to pass it right to Garrett Wilson, his new boy. Uh, chalk. 
Uh, chalk. Yeah, yeah, that's the chalk. Now okay. let's have fun. Uh, second for the Jets, give me their defense. It's Josh Allen. Are you kidding me? We don't know that Josh, he, just because Brian Dable uh, and his offense looked like hot garbage this week doesn't mean Josh Allen is uh, going to improve without him around. So, yeah, 30 to 1, give me a defense. First one I'll pop all year. Got maybe I got inspired by that block kick earlier on Sunday Night Football. At jo- What's the system with Josh Allen? If he's greater than 10 to 1, you play him. He's yeah. 11 to 1, so I put him in the card, and I went 90 to 1 in a different way, Sean. Quentin Morris. Because Ooh, okay. in their red zone package, you know which two tight ends are going to be lining up on the line of scrimmage? Dawson Knox and Quentin Morris. And there's some question about Dawson Knox's health. So, Quentin Morris at 90 to 1. Also, we, we've given you Reggie Gilliam and Quentin <laughs> Morris. God help you if they hit. We will be One insufferable. Of One of those needs it. So, yeah, we got, again, Garrett Wilson, Jets defense and special teams, Josh Allen, and Quentin Morris. Oh, man. We are going to cash huge. All right. So fun. Before we go, got to give out our DGEN's only bet of the day. Hashtag DGEN's only. For me, Ryan, I broke out the old reverse correlation. We, we got to look up as to whether or not if reverse correlation, and I pronounced that correctly, if reverse correlation is actually a thing or a word, here's what I got. Give me Damian Harris two touchdowns. Okay. But. The Jets win 60 to one feels really good. Wait, give me that. So you think they're going to run two touchdowns in the bills? Yeah. And then the Jets win 60 to one. I like that. Yeah. The, the idea is I think Damian Harris in general is underrated. I think he's a fun anytime. Uh, if you're putting him into a same game parlay, that kind of thing, or even just playing solo Damian Harris, anytime touchdown. I, I think, the internet and fantasy community doesn't realize he is their goal line back. I think Josh Allen maybe runs a little Eddie, bit less. Are you worried at all about Latavius Murray? Because Don of Bills Mafia has been chirping off about Latavius Murray a bunch. I know Damian Harris was hurt for a bit, and now he's back. Yeah, but. My read on the situation is that, to your point, Damian Harris was hurt uh, for most of the preseason. When he was healthy in preseason, again, limited reps, they did seem to use him uh, near the goal line. So him getting two touchdowns, Jets winning 60-1 to one, feels great. Let's go, baby. 60 to 1. All right, let me I just adjust this. Uh, oh, you know what? I, I don't want to. It's been such a tough night. I, I don't want to come in with some. I mean, that was a cute. That was cute. 60 to 1. Thank you. It's a nice size. But uh, there's only one way to recover from heartache and despair like, like I've felt tonight. And that's going on a hell of a bender. <laughs> so we're going to go on a hell of a bender in this way. We're going to take that Quentin Morris. That's going to be the first touchdown. We're yes. going to add it into this as an any time. Josh Allen runs for 50 yards or more. Garrett Wilson receives for 100 yards or more. And the Jets win the game. That's going to pay you 300 to 1. Oh my I don't God, know if we've right. ever given out a 300 to 1 oh same game parlay. So I put $10. I used $5. I used 10 of my bonus bet dollars from DraftKings while using promo code SGP. 10 times 300. I'm doing the math. That's $3,000. It's, uh, yeah, throw a pizza bet on it. Okay. That, that I mean, like I'm going to put, pizza. I'm going to put more than a pizza bet on it. Let's see what the limit is. <laughs> oh, it's not very big, Sean. Ryan's Jason. It's not, it's not very Jason. Big. I can only put, yeah. Fuck. Ryan, well, it's been real. Yeah, it's maybe, been real. maybe you'll see me again. Maybe you won't. If and, not, farewell. And Godspeed. If, and, uh, say hi to Mark, Mark, Mark Lewinsky on the other side. NFL, great NFL week one in the books, at least for most of us. Ryan Ertz, Circa Millions no, team, three it, and two. I don't even give a You're shit. You're two and zero on your locks. I'm one and one, but I did that's hit my awesome. money line. Dog, that's pretty exciting for the folks. It's exciting. I mean, I'm I'm not feeling the excitement right now. Great week of shows coming up, including our return to Las Vegas on Friday for Vison, uh, 9 p.m. Sports Game on the Podcast Live. That show was a lot of fun. Check that out over on YouTube TV. Of course, we got a big week of shows. We got. College football, uh, DFS, Thursday night props, week one props, and of course our N- week two props, and of course our NFL pick show, all coming at you, all completely free. Toss us a bone, sportsgamepodcast.com slash Patreon. Get in over there. Still time uh, to get in on the weekly Patreon pick them. Uh, pretty awesome. Every week, giving away cash and prizes. Sportsgamepodcast.com slash Patreon. Do your part. Do your part. 
Oh, it's a long week. In the war against <laughs> Corporate Gambling. Tuesday. Thank you for participating can, in the you know what? Gambling podcast. Can we take a minute to... Sure. I would love for a, a normal civilian to come out and try to do this fucking Tuesday to Monday morning trip with us. Talking about Colby? Uh, he... he <laughs> Yeah, for those who are wondering, why? Why is not Kobe not there? Well, Kobe tapped out like a little <laughs> bitch. He did submit I'm, to Vegas. Yeah, I mean, if, I'm sure Kobe has some people in the chat that will report back to him that I <laughs> called him a little bitch. But you know what he acted like? In true uh, ironic fashion, he was really a fucking lawn chair this week. <laughs> hey, uh, big thanks, of course, to uh, everyone here at the Blue Wire Studios. Do a great job producing oh, the yeah. shows. Always appreciate the hard work. Shout out to uh, Circa and Westgate for the hospitality. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the money green. He's Ryan. Bye-bye. Kramer, let it ride.